In this video, I'm going to show how I've created my second brain in Notion. Essentially, a second brain is just a place to store all my ideas, things that I learn, any articles that I come across, any videos with ideas that I think are worth saving. It's a place not only to store those ideas, which will be useful for reference in the future, but it also provides a knowledge database for you to form your ideas with, form connections from, even use it to create new content and curate content as well. And so in this video, I'm going to be showing you my second brain and also explaining how I've created the items as well. But if you just want to get the template for yourself that I'll create, I'll link it down in the description below. So let's get started. Essentially, these are the items in my second brain. I've got a section for books, learning, people, success journal, resources and records. So I'll go through each one and I'll kind of show you how I've structured each page. And I like to keep things very simple, by the way. I don't like all of these fancy relational features and just making things look crazy, pretty, when at the end of the day, all you need is something functional that works and does the job for you. So my process is very simple. So starting off with books, at the top here, I've got my goal. So I've already made a video on goal setting and kind of how I break down my goals. So if you want to watch my video on that, then feel free. But essentially what I've done is I've created a synced block into from my goals page into this books page. And I'll show you how you can create a synced, um, synced block. So for example, imagine if this was my goals page, right? I essentially, it can be any block. So for example, it can be a call out block. And I might say my goals is to read more books. And if you've watched my goal setting video, you will know that I need, I'll fill out my why, my inspiration, my habits, so on, and obstacles and so on and so forth. Now, once I've done all of this, what I can do is I can select this block, command C to copy it, or control C if you're on Windows. And let's say I can paste it anywhere. So I want to paste this in my books page because when I, because this is the place that I store my reading list, my notes from my books and the books I've completed. All I can simply do is command V to paste it. And you'll see an option here, which says paste and sync. I want to select this option, paste and sync. Now, as you can see, there's now a red highlight around this entire block. What this means is that any changes that I make to this block will actually also automatically update in the original place that I had that block. And the reason this is useful is because as you go through the year, your goals might change or the way you approach things might change, or you might want to add new obstacles or you might want to change certain things. So for example, if I say, okay, reading, I'm reading at a very good pace, I might want to increase this, um, goal to read 20 books if i go back to my goals page which i'll regularly review during my you know weekly monthly reviews are mainly monthly reviews you can see here that it's also updated here so that's very good because you can just update it in one place and it will update everywhere. You don't have to keep going back and forth and updating it everywhere you've got it. And you also don't have to remember where you've copied this block and where you've pasted it. Because if you go back to that synced block, what you can actually do is click here where it says editing original. And here you'll see all a list of everywhere that you've pasted this block. So right now I've only got one thing because that's my original block. And as you can see, it says original. But if I had pasted this link synced blocks into other pages, it would all show up here. So you don't have to try and remember where you've pasted all this synced block, which I think is really cool. So yeah, I've got my goals at the top. I've got what book I'm currently reading right now as a call out block. And then I've just got some pages for reading lists. Now this is just, you know, literally what it sounds. It's just screenshots and snapshots and um, snippets of book I want to read next basic. So I'll show you this little section at the bottom as well. This is a page for all of the books that I've completed and all my notes on it as well. So as you can see, these are all the books I've read so far and I've got page for the notes that I've created from those books. I might make a separate video on how I go about reading books and making notes and doing all this process, but I'll just show you this is kind of briefly what the notes from this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People look like. As you can see, I don't have many notes. I just focus on, you know, the key principles that I found helpful. And at the bottom of the page, I've got a resources section where I've got a summary of the book from a website called Get Abstract. That's just a book summary and notes website. It's a really good website. I put a screen recording of what the website looks like here. But essentially, it gives you a rating. It gives you, you know, what the good qualities of the book are. And it just has, you know, lots of takeaways and very detailed summaries. So each principle with, you know, relevant quotes. 
I think it's very well written and I first discovered it when I was a student. And the reason why I decided to sign up was because this pricing plan for student was very reasonable, it was very affordable. And I actually ended up liking it, so I just, you know, use it as my book review kind of website. If you want to check out Get Abstract, I've put a link down in the description below. And I think if you use that, you get a free 30 day trial as well. So worth trying out if just to test it to see how you like it or not. Next, I've got this book summary and notes template page. That's literally just like how I create my notes page to publish on my blog. So you can check my blog, abbyunbetter.com for my book notes. I'll be uploading new ones, you know, regularly. So keep an eye out for those. And these are just some good book summary sites that I can use for book summaries and to help with my notes and things like that. Next section is learning. So this is a very important section because essentially all the media or videos, courses, podcasts, articles and events I go to, anything I consume, I'll write notes on it in one of these pages here in the learning page. So for example, if I go on my videos page, it's essentially just a database which is a videos database. And when I've watched a video, I'll just make notes on it on here. So I've got a template. I'll show you what one of them looks like. So for example, this is a video I watched on YouTube setup by Vanessa Lau. And I've created a, a database properties here where I've got, you know, status. This is just whether I've watched it or not. So in progress, completed to review. I've got the source, which is basically similar to the URL. I don't know why I have two um, properties there. Actually, I need to combine them into one and delete one of them. But basically just the link to the YouTube video. And then I've got tags here as to like whatever it relates to. And then I've just got my notes here. Now, one section I have in my template at the end is, will I be making any changes after watching this video? So I haven't actually filled this out, but maybe I'll say in the future, consider upgrading. YouTube setup just so I can create a better you know environment and create better videos and if you're new to databases it's very easy to create one basically just click right slash and then create database and as you can see it comes up with an inline database that's what I've created you can give it a title so I've just created it called videos database and then to create the template that you saw you literally just go on here drop down click on new template and I've just called it video or you can call it a new video. I've added the icon of a video. So I've added this icon and then I've literally just got heading, heading one or heading two. It doesn't matter what changes will I be making after watching this video. So now every time I Every time I watch a new video, all I have to do is create, click on this button here, click on video template and it will automatically pop up with my template. And remember I had those URL and thing properties. I can just add a property called URL and then I can add another property called tags. And then I just paste the YouTube link of the video here. So when I want to make notes on my video, I'll just put the title of the video here. So Vanessa Lau YouTube setup. I'll paste the link of the video here. I'll give it a tag, let's say YouTube. Oh, I don't know why I've got two tag properties. I can delete one of them. But anyway, you can just add whatever properties you want. I also like to create a add a created time properties just so I can sort by when I created it. And then here I'll write my notes and then here I'll put what changes I'll make after watching this video. Now, a cool trick with databases is you can go on this drop down and where it says this video template here, you can set that as the default. As you can see right now, empty is selected as the default. So if I click on the new button, it will create me an empty page. I don't want that. I want it to automatically create me the video template. So I can just go on this three dots here, set as default for all views, because I just want it throughout. And now as you can see, the default option is next to the video. So now when I click the new button, it will automatically populate with the template for the video and I can just fill out everything. Next is courses. This is similar. It's just literally um, another database with notes from all the courses I've taken. For example, this is a financial markets course that I took from Coursera. As you can see, I took this quite a while ago. Um, 2019. I haven't reviewed it in ages and um, apparently I terminated it because I didn't find it valuable anymore. Um, and here I've actually got written notes that I've screenshotted into it. I'll show you a different one. Normally I type the notes. So for example, this is my notes from the Wim Hof method. As you can see, it's on my hard drive. And these are just some of the notes that I've created. Next to the podcast pages, 
I haven't really started gotten, getting into the habit of listening to podcasts regularly. So this is literally just a list of podcasts I would want to listen to in the future. So I don't have many notes or like anything much to show here. But if you do listen to podcasts, again, just follow the same principle of creating a database where you can store your notes. Next is article and blogs. So what I do is I create bookmarks on Chrome. And after I've read an article, I'll create kind of like notes on this. So for example, if I show you my binaural beats notes, this is just saying what binaural beats are two frequencies that combine to hear one. And apparently it helps with um, studying and sleep and relaxation and improving creativity as well. So that's just something that I want to try out. And I've just got screenshots from the text here. I should not paste where I got this from the URL. So maybe I should have put that in. But anyway, and next is events. I don't really go to many events before, but when I was in uni, I went to a few events and I just put kind of notes from the events I went to. For example, this was a event from a law firm into startup law. So I just made all of my notes here. And then you see a similar theme here where like right at the end of pages, I have resources. So here I've just got the slides from the event itself. So that is my learning database. Next, I've got people. Now that's a bit personal. So instead of showing you inside, I'll actually create it from scratch for you and show you what the purpose of this is. I don't want to show you my people database because it's got names of, you know, my friends and family and I, I don't know if they're comfortable with being online without my consent. So basically it's just a page called people. It's got an icon of people. Is it this one? No. Like this one. And the first thing I have is a call out block. And essentially in this call out block, I have these following things. So about any person I find important in my life, I like to have a think about how do they make me feel? Can I be myself around them? Are they positive vibes or are they negative vibes? Do they make me feel good about myself or bad about myself? Do I like spending time with them? And would I voluntarily want to see them? And that's just kind of like a audit of the people I have in my life. Because if I'm thinking, you know, they make me feel annoyed, I feel like I'm not being my true self. They always are negative. They always make me feel bad, either just bad in general or bad about myself. I don't like spending time with them. It's a chore. And to be honest, I wish I didn't have to see them. Then you, you can be like, mm, do I really want to have this person in my life? But if it's like, yes, they make me feel great. I'm my authentic self. They're very positive vibes. They make me feel good. They bring me energy. I like and want to spend time with them then maybe you should spend more time with them. So I like this people audit thing. And then I have a page for birthdays, which literally with the icon of the cake. And this literally has the month January to December. And I literally have the names and dates of people's birthdays. So for example, if I have a friend called Adam on January the 3rd, and a friend called Eve on January the 4th, and then I let's say in February, I have a friend called Jack, whose birthday is on February the 16th. And basically, I'll just fill this all out. And this allows me to remind myself of when people's birthdays are and see which birthdays are upcoming so I can remember to wish them. Next, I've got a section on updates and motives. And here I just have basically just a list of motives that I've gone to. So for example, I might say motive with Eve on today and I'll just have notes of any updates we shared anything to just remember and then afterwards I have a database and it's called personal CRM database basically it's just got a list of all my people so for example Adam and Jack let's say I've got Adam Eve and Jack right so I'll have Adam Eve Jack in each page what I've done is I've created a template where I've got birthday, contact history, and notes. So the way I can put this into a template is I'll just copy it, go down here in the drop down, create new template, and I'll just call it new person, paste that in, done. So for example, for Eve, when I click new person, my template will be auto populated. So for Eve, I can put birthday is 4th of January. Now in contact history, I can make use of Notion links. So here you can see I've got a motive with Eve. If I just copy this, Command C, select the block and copy it. If I paste it in the contact history, I can actually click link to page. 
So while on here in the updates and motives, I might have the motives in chronological order, on the actual person page, I have all the instances of that person only that I can paste here. And then here I can put notes. So for example, let's say if I say likes to drink tea, that way I can kind of, you know, think of gift ideas or just write important stuff which I want to remember about that person. So I think that's really cool because I'm just valuing the people in my life a lot more by doing this. So next I have this page called Success Journal. That's basically just like a list of the notes, life advice, any quotes that I want to remember, any links I, you know, have saved. It's basically just a list of like life advice slash motivation stuff that I've saved. And then I've got a section of page called resources and records. Now this is literally just like any guides, like literally from cleaning to like chat GPT prompts to tools and apps. I'm going to create another video on the tools and apps I use and stuff. Even like house plants, like which house plants I have, how to take care of them, how to water them, a picture of each plant. So I've got the species name. I know it's so nerdy, but anyway. Like, did you know these Christmas plants are called Schumbluglera? Like, I don't know why you'd need to know that and why I'd want to know that either. But fun facts and, you know, how you should water them, like how to take care of them so they don't die. Because I had a phase in my life where I was really into plants, but they kept dying. So I even bought fake plants, as you can see. But, you know, if I followed these instructions, maybe my plants wouldn't have died. So, yeah, I've just got a page for literally everything everything like loads of things on here like links that i've saved guides musics that i like shows that i want to watch all of this now next i wanted to show you my saved database the reason why this is useful is because this just works kind of like an inbox to me and i can use either my phone or chrome notion extension to save stuff into this database so for example imagine if i was reading an article on five tips for working from home effectively what you can do is go on to chrome and download the notion chrome extension i can't spell extension for the life of me right now and then click add to chrome add extension what this will do is this will download the notion web clipper extension onto your chrome and what you can do is actually pin it so it always appears on the top here. So next time when I go on this article, I want to save this article into my save database. I literally just click on this notion icon and you can click here, add to, it's already selected the save database for me. I just click save page. Now, if I go into notion, as you can see, you see this has been saved. I can do that straight from my phone as well. And what I'll do is I'll put tags on it. So for example, working from home, what's this about? I don't know, I might call it a reference. And so if I open that page, what it will actually do is it will create a copy of the article and you can either make notes from this, you can rewrite it, or you can just use it as a means of saving the article in case the link dies or something. So I find that very helpful. So that's essentially my process for creating a second brain in Notion. As you can see, I like to keep things very simple, but I also do use the features in Notion of databases, links and synced blocks mainly. So if you want to download this second brain template, I'll just link it down in the description below. If you're just new to Notion and you don't know how to use it properly, I've also created other videos on Notion as well, which you can check out on my channel. With that being said, I'd like to know in the comments what you'd like to see. Do you want to see how I create notes from books? Is there anything I showed you in this video that you want more understanding or explanation of or you want me to expand in more detail basically i just want to know what video you'd find helpful because i like making these videos and so any content ideas will be welcome and also while you're here if you like this video if you like watching my face then subscribe to the channel and subscribe to my newsletter as well so i'll put all of those in the description below with that being said thank you for watching and i'll see you again in my next video bye